Where do we leave off? Ionizing radiation resistance and why that's so important. One thing that we didn't talk about is something that I've got written on the board here, which is desiccation. Well, desiccation, as you should all probably already know as biology students, is the state of extreme dryness or the process of extreme drying. Why an organism like DRAD would be more suited to survive some of the other stresses. And all of the papers that I've read have come to the same conclusion. Everything is basically an incidental consequence of uh, adaptation to dehydration. Desiccation, 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 which is a very common physiological stress. Stress, it still is a common physiological stress now, but not as common as it used to be. Think about it from this standpoint. What does the earth look like now? Okay, so there's our happy little planet right there. And uh, all these squiggly lines represent billions and billions of gallons, billions and billions of gallons of water. Um, so clearly, not so much desiccation going on here. But if you think of the earth, well, billions of years ago, I think the story might have been just a little bit different. Now that probably just looks like an eyeball really in need of visine, but that's, I mean, the whole point is that this is a dry, barren place. We have no atmosphere. We have no ozone layer. We have nothing to protect us, and I'd say that's a pretty desiccated place. So in keeping with desiccation, we're, we're leading into the physiology. What separates DRAD from a lot of other organisms is he's able to protect his proteins against oxidation. <clears throat> so how exactly is it that DRAD is able to hold on to his, you know, that's a little protein right there, it's an amino acid, R group C. But how is it that DRAD is able to hold on to his protein so well? And it has to do with the cell structure. I'm going to break down the five layers that compose DRAD cell structure. The first layer is the cytoplasmic membrane. <laughs> known as the rigid peptidoglycan holy layer. So the next layer we've got is what's called a compartmentalized layer. And then we've got the outer membrane. which is, uh, it's called an S layer. It's known for hexagonally packed subunits. It's a very thin layer. So as you can see, there's one, two, three, four, and five layers, the DRADs. Now, when you look at these layers, I can't exactly tell you what they're all for. And in fact, some of the papers that I've read say that they, they don't know each individual layer's specific function. But what I can tell you is that these layers equal about 150 nanometers in thickness. By comparison, our cells are maybe six to 12 nanometers in thickness. Now does it make sense that this little guy over here can take six grays of radiation when we are
click once, one more time. Thank you. Sean's going to explain uh, a little bit more about the physiology, uh, more specifically structure. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and have a snack. It's apple. There. Now my apple has a leaf, just like that apple. So I'm going to go ahead and enjoy this while uh, Sean tells you a little bit more. Take it away. Is this considered eating in lab? You guys remember that time that he walked into the room all blabbermouth while everybody was taking a test? How funny was that? <laughs>